Robster, let me get my headphones on. We're doing something a little bit different right now. What are we doing? We're uh, we're gonna we're gonna do the we're gonna join the bandwagon of doing a reaction video. We're gonna do a response video because reaction reaction is like triggered, you know, like I'm reacting. I'm triggered by something, therefore I'm reacting. We're gonna respond. We're responding to something right now. Let me just say say something like real quick. This is um, like this is this is a hazard. If I come back too far, let me move it closer to you, bud. Can you guys see the sky in the background right now? The sky is beautiful. God has painted a beautiful scene for us. Yeah, it, it really is. And how can anyone just look at the sky right now, like this, and think that this just happened? You know, just because. I mean, the heavens declare God's, God's glory. Amen. So let me let me say something about music here, real quick. Is um, we're going to talk about music. We're going to react to um, uh, a singer. Uh, she uh, would profess to be a Christian singer. Um, I've never heard her. Uh, I, I, I haven't either. I've 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 seen people mention things about her. Yeah. Um, like I'll listen to a video for like thirty seconds and I'll stop because I think it's ridiculous. But her name's Grace uh, Semler. Yeah. Grace Semler. She's um, the daughter of a preacher, and um, she claims to be a Christian artist. And the concerning thing, aside from her calling herself a Christian artist, is that her songs are really popular and are like high on Christian playlists, I guess. So, okay, so well. I'm looking, though, at her YouTube channel, and, um, like, her, her highest played one was this party called Jesus from Texas. And, and it, six months ago. And it's only 13,000 views. I have a I have a guitar lesson video with more views than that. That's right. And you should go to that channel and subscribe. It's called what? Uh, guitar Teacher Rob. Guitar Teacher Rob. I think uh, we've made that known, right? That he he's he's a guitar player. He used to be in a band. He's really good, and he teaches guitar lessons. So he uh, makes little videos of. Well, what do you do? Why don't you? I, I just do videos of guitar. But it, here's here's thing with music is um, it's it's. <laughs> Uh, with with modern Christian music, I don't listen to it. I have no clue what's going on. Uh, I don't listen to Hill Song. I don't listen to the K Love stuff. Um, I love hymns. I love Bob Coughlin's music. So I do. I guess I listen to some new stuff. Getty's come out with good. See, stuff. I don't even know. I don't even know those guys. Like, uh, I I don't really listen. Unfortunately, like if I well, not unfortunately, if I listen to music, it's going to be stuff that I that I like. Music you know? ended and, with with the death of John Bonham. Uh, exactly and so and that's going to be a good episode when we talk about our, our music yeah we're going to but let's um let's go to um let's okay i'm gonna we i've never heard this song it's similar before we're dead and uh there there's seven thousand views on it and we have the the lyrics so let's um <laughs> let's just click on it all right let's click on it and let's listen to it let's see what let's happens to here some great christian music right now um and the song's oh, called no, before we're really dead really and it's doing a an ad. I have to be better at doing this. Well, we could edit this. Okay, here we go. Are we going to respond to the music video too? Um, yeah, we can respond to the music video. Um, this whole, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we're obviously going to, yeah. Okay, here we go. Okay, first of all, let me so just I, start off. Her her voice is really good, and that melody is really unique. I'm just going to start off by saying that. Okay. Well, you're you're a fan. Uh, just kidding. I have to. I'm pulling up the lyrics. And you're sitting in economy, studying the boys down below. I bet you didn't know. Um, I was a speck on the dock. Yeah. So. Okay, so uh, she starts off by singing, "I saw you in a so pale English? New England sky." Is she English? I don't, I don't know. Um, look, she's got a really nice voice. the The guitar sounded really well balanced in the background. The little finger picking thing that's going on. And um, by the way, I'm not intentionally stopping this as our, but here we go. Call 
calling out for a friend I tried to find you in the clouds of smoke Perfume on your coat Lost me again Okay, so pause right there. That was shaped in a cross, like a cross. Yeah, and now blood's coming out of her her forehead. Um, okay, so I don't even know what I don't know what she's talking about explicitly right here. I, I don't know if she's talking about like a, if this is romantic or if this is like God like looking down on her. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, um, but she's what the message is right now. Yeah, like is this. Is this God calling out or yeah, I have no idea because would would she consider this a Christian song? You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I don't I mean, because it's not if I read the lyrics and I'm listening to it, I wouldn't think this is a Christian song. No, but I gotta tell you, I I, I mean I, so I, I, I appreciate good music and yeah, I, I think but here's she, the, it's like, good, but what would you what would you classify her uh genre as? Just like if if she doesn't not claiming that she's a Christian artist. What would you, I don't like, I don't like this style of music just in general. So I, yeah, that's kind of my thing. I think they all kind of, I think a lot of these singers kind of have the same voice. It's like the melancholy, quiet, emotional, kind of like darker. Yeah, it is. Music, it's it's, it's like a darker type of um, folk pop thing going on. Um, yeah, I guess that's, I think that's accurate. I, I, I do think she's, she's got a great voice and the arrangement's good. The melody's really nice and, and all of the harmony. So I could see why, I could see why people would like it. Yeah. And the lyrics are kind of ambiguous. And I think that that appeals to people. Um, and, and that's obviously the subjective thing about music is cause she, she might have a very specific topic in mind when she's writing this, but other people can listen to it and apply like their own kind of thing to it. Yeah, and that's just, cool if you're Jim Morrison, but if you're writing songs that are for the Christian audience, um, at, you know, I, I I think that you know the word of word of God is not ambiguous. No, not uh, at all. And, and I think and, that's that's where it's problematic if you're calling yourself a Christian artist and then your your music doesn't reflect that, um, or your lifestyle, or your lifestyle. I mean, her her whole image. I mean, she's obviously she's she's a female, but she's she appears to be more masculine. So. Um, we can infer from that that she obviously she's she's made it known that she's lesbian and that God created her this way and she, um, oh, I thought you were gonna click, no, you're gonna click a button, and that um she probably agrees with the whole LGBTQ stuff, um and she probably sees um God loving and and that's why He created those people, but Scripture is so clear, um that those kinds of behaviors are sin. Yeah, it was interesting. We were listening to, uh, um, before this, just trying to get an idea of who she was, um, we were listening to an interview with her or a discussion with her and the lead singer from Jars of Clay. And she Which said... Is another Christ, popular Christian group. Yeah, another popular Christian group. And has written some, some pretty cool tunes. But uh, she basically says there needs to be um, a safe place for... Uh, Christian artists to come out, basically for them to come out as gay. The, you know, the problem with that statement is is um, it's completely contradictory. Um, it's a complete contradiction, and it's straight up rebellion. There's no such thing as a gay Christian, right? If no. if if the if there the, might be there might be a Christian who hates their sin, who has those types of impulses. Exactly, because we all have impulses, whether it's with sexual sin or alcohol or drugs or lying or, or stealing. We all have certain inclinations and it's people like this or any other people that say, okay, well, this isn't sin. This is just me being a human and God created me this way. And she wants, they, they want to maintain that lifestyle and say at the same time that their God is okay with that. And their God's okay with if like, let me Which use, is idolatry. It's, it's completely creating, idolatry. It's creating God in your own image so that you don't have to sacrifice anything. I can continue to live the way that I want, and God's going to accept me for it no matter what, even though his word, which is the only you know revelation that we have to go back on, and it's completely against that. So Yeah, like, okay, so what is the eschatological goal of our, <laughs> our faith? 
is God's glory, our salvation in heaven, right? Yeah. Um, and so what do we know about heaven? There will be no homosexuals there. If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Now, what's the unrighteous? Well, Paul says, do not be deceived. By the way, Paul uses that like in Ephesians chapter 5, do not be deceived by these type of things. And there he's talking about covetousness, idolatry, and sexual impurity. Here he's talking about the same things, but he gets more specific. He says, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. So if I say I'm a murdering Christian, well, I, I, there's no such thing as a murdering yeah. Christian because you're in Christ, you have sin, you deal with that sin. I'm sorry. I'm going to go off. So you go ahead and say, no, respond no, to that. No, I'm just saying, I mean, like explicitly with the New Testament, the Apostle Paul is clear that, um, you know, he talks about how men started having lustful attractions to other men and women did the same thing. And it was a clear distinction that that was a sin and that it was lust. These these people started to lust for the same sex as them. And it's wrong. It's, and that, wrong. And that's, it's wrong. The Apostle Paul, who was uh, declared to be an apostle by the risen Lord Jesus Christ and gave him the authority to write these things. That's what he's saying. And I think a lot of people might say, well, well, Jesus never explicitly said anything about, you know, everything Jesus said contradicts that idea. It it contradicts the idea. Yeah. And, and I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. You know, ridiculous. Jesus says that marriage is between one man, one woman. He goes back to the, uh, the account of Genesis in, um, in chapter two, uh, where and he quotes that as that one man, one woman for life. So the the verses, real quick, that would maybe be ambiguous about this issue. Let me see if I can. Um, let me see if I can find them real quick. Hold on. Oh, there is none. <laughs> um, so it's, it's just it's a very. It's so dangerous because then these people claiming to be Christians and yet they're completely controlled by their sin. And the Bible says that we love our sin. And because of that, uh, we're natural children of God's wrath and we need to be called out of that. But if you love your sin, you're not, you're not a Christian if you love and stay in your sin. And that's what, unfortunately, artists like that are doing. That's exactly what, that's exactly what she's doing. She's attracted to other females. God's word says that that's wrong. And she's probably going to say, oh, well, like, you know, that doesn't mean what it really means. And that's been mistranslated. And then that goes into this whole slippery slope of, okay, well, then what can you trust then? How do you trust that verse? And how do you not trust this other verse? Yeah, if you, if you, or, you What's truth then? The Bible is then suspicious in, in everything. If it's, if it's suspicious on morality and the holiness of God is the, the one attribute of God raised to the superlative, then you have a, you have a big issue. You know, you know, like here's here's what I want to say though, and let's be you and I always want to want to emphasize this is that so this person is obviously gifted by God, yeah, musically, um, creative. Th- th- that that is a gift, good voice, yeah. yeah, good good voice, um, and has has fallen prey to her sinfulness. And what needs to happen now for her? Is, is repentance and, yeah, and rep- turning yeah. to Christ and using that gift for God's glory. But uh, she's not using that gift for God's glory. She's using that gift to exploit her own perversion. Yeah. And the issue nowadays is with the platforms of social media that she's being, she's being exalted and praised for her brave behavior. And then you have other people who claim to be Christian who say, okay, like this female, like she's saying that it's okay. And look at all the praise that she's getting. Look at all the combinations that she's getting. So I'm going to, like, okay, maybe I'm going to stop feeling so guilty about me feeling this way, and I'm just going to give in. And that's and that's me coming out of the closet, and that's me being who God created me to be. And it's not God didn't brave. Cre- it's, it's, God did not create you like this. We were born into sin. We were born into sin. It is sinful. the fall. The, 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 all these things that we experience all these times, these unnatural things, it is sin. That's all it is. And so am I going to give in to my sin and say that God created me this way, or am I going to repent and try to turn away from it? And it might be hard, and it might suck, and it might take every second of every day all my focus to, to 
stay away from that behavior, but are you going to do it or are you going to yeah, I, let, I, it, let it, yeah, let it take control? I would make an appeal to her to, to read the scriptures. I would make an appeal to her to, um, if she's a preacher's daughter, um, regardless of the uh, denomination from which she comes from, certainly she's probably familiar with scripture. I, I would implore her to go to scripture um, and to plead with God for grace in yeah. her life that she may may turn. Um, we I never just, got through right, the full sorry. song. We didn't get through. The, I just want to say one more thing because we were talking about that interview that she had with the uh, with the other band, the pots of jars clay. jars of clay, pots of clay, pots of clay. <laughs> so the, I don't know what that means. Well, clay, I can I understand the biblical reference. Um, but she said, um, you know, that she she can't. Essentially, I'm going to paraphrase. She can't believe in a God that is so small that would essentially condemn her for the way that she was created, and. God is not like us. God is holy. Um, so God is much bigger than us. And to say that God is small because um, we don't want to think that we're going to be sent to hell for our sinful behavior, therefore God is small, is is a completely dangerous mindset to have. It, it is. And, um... and I would say the same, yeah, like, and these are the people that we have to pray for. Like, we have to pray for them and and and. And pray that they will um, see their sin and recognize it and feel convicted and 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 then yeah repent. Okay, and, and let, that. But and why are we even talking about this? Is this because we hate gay people? No, not no, at all. Absolutely not, not. Not at all. The the problem with this is because we wouldn't even be listening to this or even be familiar with this person if she wasn't saying, "Hey, I can be a Christian." That is one that follows Christ, that bears the name of Christ, that assumes the lordship of Christ, and and then that means that if Christ is Lord of your life, we, that means we are automatically into submission to Him. If this because she's claiming that, and that's, then and say, that's the that's the issue is that she's making that claim. If she wants to be a secular artist and put out good music, that I, I mean, I listen to weird artists like that too. Like we like Queen, Freddie Mercury was gay. Right. Great love, musician. Love, love Queen. Love, I listen love. to Queen frequently still. Yeah, me Elton too. John. Yeah, great. A lot, listen, it has nothing to do with that, but she's claiming to be a Christian and she's exhibiting behavior which is completely contradictive. Um, which requires a response. If you're going yeah. to if you're going to say, in fact, the apostle Paul says expose these things. So if if you and I in order to be biblical, yeah. well we need to actually expose those things. So yeah, we didn't finish the song. <laughs> we were gonna try to do a, re a response video to uh, to this complete song, but um, we didn't understand it. It was too deep for us. It is too deep for us. I blood's coming out of her forehead, and and and, and it's not Alice Cooper. So. so, so who is a Christian, by the way? He is Alice Cooper. He is. All right, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. <laughs>